Hello everyone, my name is Danubio. Uh, we are here at CloudWalk and I'm going to present today a paper regarding uh, graph neural networks, which is a kind of a very exciting topic. And the, the, main, uh, the main motivation to, to choose this paper is that because it's, it's, it's something that is new today in, in the world, like uh, even though we have like uh, models being developed for quite a while now, it's something that, that, that was first seen in the community in the scientific community, I believe it was like in 2004, the, the first paper got, uh, got published. And it's pretty exciting to, to, to deal with it. And a gentle introduction because it's a very complicated topic and I would, uh, uh, I would like to first introduce the, the basic uh, regarding it. And then we have uh, more understanding on the, on, on a common ground, right? So, um, okay, uh, the, and, and, and this, the, uh, this paper from the Steel Pub, it's, it's like a very, very interesting uh, format that they uh, developed. Uh, they, are, they, they are in uh, IATOS now, but it's a very interesting format, and they, they, they have other papers that uh, follow this format as well. So, um, the, as, as I said, the, the GNNs, like graph neural networks, have been around for a decade now, like more than a decade. Like the, uh, he mentions here the, the, a paper from 2009, which is actually just a rebuild for, uh, for this paper from 2004, the same authors. But uh, so, so the idea is that the first time the world saw something uh, in that regard, it's like actually this paper uh, over here, you know, like. Uh, first uh, time someone calls something like graph neural network model. So, um, and it's very uh, useful for a lot of things like uh, physics simulations, fake news detection, traffic prediction, recommendation system, antibacterial discovery, because we need to take a look at the, the structure of things that are uh, for which the data is organized as, as graphs, right? And and, and, one, and one thing that we should take a look first is like, what, what is the data that is most naturally organized as a graph, right? And we, we need to explore as well the, the things that makes graphs different from, from other types of data. And here in the paper, he will uh, try to, uh, we, we're going to see uh, like a, uh, a basic implementation of a, of a, a GNN and with, in a, in a playground uh, that they developed in the website here using a TensorFlow library for JavaScript. But, okay, so um, I believe everybody are already, uh, already uh, aware of the, the, the basic structure of a graph. You know, you have nodes, you have edge, you have some global uh, um, uh, thing that describes the, the, the context of everything that you have there uh, structure as graph. And so, uh, Thing here is that uh, you you could have a, a graph that is uh, either fully connected or, or weakly connected. Like uh, this is this here is uh, an example of a graph that is is not fully connected. You know, and you can see here how things uh, change in the in the in the in the right side here as we tweak those those connections, right? And something very oh yeah, and and something very important to know is like like it's that uh, it's extremely important to order your data in indirected or undirected graph because this will change uh, everything uh, after you are starting, not just modeling a graph, but if you are going to fit that graph in a model, this will uh, uh, change completely the outputs. Okay, so, um, all right, so first thing, uh, that we should take a look at the most uh, basic way of you uh, seeing a graph represented in an adjacent matrix here is an image, you know, like uh, you, uh, uh, it is the most basic uh, way of, of looking at it because you, you are constrained about the, the, the types of connections, you know, like uh, you, you know exactly how many connections each node will have because here the, there are only three variations. Either you are on a corner and you have three connections or you are like in a board and you have like five and uh, five connections or uh, any other node will have eight connections each uh, right and, and this is the representation of the matrix the adjacent matrix for this for this uh, uh, image over here so um, and oh and and something here is that uh, you you always 
you will always have a symmetric matrix, a JSON matrix here, because uh, you know you can't connect this guy over here with this guy over here, so uh, you you won't have that uh, kind of sparse uh, representations, right? Uh, also, text uh, you can you know, move on and, and take a look at how text can be represented in the JSON matrix here. And uh, the thing here is that uh, since we are following on like a a very uh, fixed order of connections, we will always have uh, a diagonal uh, matrix, adjacent matrix representing the, the graph itself. And, and okay, and so he, he just introduced us to this, this idea of representing the graphs, uh, but he states here that this is redundant since uh, all image and all text will uh, uh, always have the same structure of, of the data, you know, like it's not going to change that regard. Uh, but okay, uh, all right. So, in in a in, in the next step, he's he's introducing us to more complex structured data such as molecules. Uh, we we still have like a, a symmetric uh, a JSIS matrix here because you know it's it's a, a it's it's not direct the graph is not direct and not, not like so this this guy over here will have a relationship with this guy and so on um, uh, okay so uh, just moving past four is here so here's he, he starts uh, getting a little more interesting because we we start taking a look on the in the social interactions being represented as graphs you know? um, and again it's, it's still uh, an, an undirected graph you know, you, you have a node A related to node B, and node B related to node A, because if I know you and I have a relationship with you, you have a relationship with me. Uh, and this is from Otello, uh, uh, from Shakespeare, and the, uh, the way all characters will act, uh, relate to each other. Um, and all right, so the one, one good example of a directed graph in this case would be like a citation work, like a paper A cite paper B, but paper B cannot cite paper A uh, as well because you know, one is developed, uh, is published before the other, and so on. And one of the, the main uh, metrics that we should take a look at while uh, analyzing a graph is uh, the density of the, 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 the connectivity you have there, you know, like the degree of, of of the graph and, and the nodes itself, like uh, how, how many edges do we have per node and so on. And this, this the, like from data engineer perspective, it affects profoundly the way we, uh, the, we, we can query the graph information or process information in the graph, but from the, uh, the perspective of, you know, of uh, analyzing this data is also uh, very important because uh, uh, later on when we try to apply uh, Algorithms that will look at the, the the degree of connectivity of each node, uh, maybe uh, more noise. Uh, in some cases, uh, uh, will be just noise because you know we we'll have a high, a high a, which they call uh, a super nodes. You know, but uh, will be just noise sometimes. But sometimes it will be uh, a very useful information for very particular types of analysis. And so this is very very important metric yeah, over here. Uh, okay. Um, I can, can. Oh yeah. So so this this is where we we start taking a look. Like uh, okay. So uh, uh, if we apply Jenny into a graph, what what type of thing we uh, what type of things we are trying to to predict, right? And then there are three main stuff that we can uh, predict with uh, what Jenny has, like a graph level. Uh, prediction where uh, we're going to take a look in the whole graph and, and understand like a, a, a yield properties that represent the whole graph itself or a node level property that we would like to to understand better for uh, for nodes and also for net uh, for edges and here on edge it's kind of interesting and we'll see this uh, later on that uh, edges can can also uh, yield information that will uh, make us predict things in a in a, in a more uh, general way. You know, like uh, we we can't take a look and pre predict and properties in edge level, but that is it, maybe it's just a step that we would take for uh, take to in order to understand uh, like uh, uh, subgraph structures and so on. So uh, very very interesting this regard. So uh, here we have an example of what would be a graph desk. Uh, 
uh, a prediction. Uh, in this case here, like uh, we, we we suppose that we have uh, a graph uh, of, of molecules, and then uh, if we spot uh, uh, the two rings connected uh, by two nodes apart, then the, that molecule will smell like this or like that, and so on. So understanding the the, the, the context of the whole graph would yield us some conclusion in the end and predicted the formation of those structures as well. So this would be an example of, of a graph level task. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, yeah. And here, here a nice point to, 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 to make is that, like, uh, on sentiment analysis, we want to understand the mood that is carried by a whole sentence, right? And this is, this is something analogous to that, and we want to understand the mood of the graph. Uh, okay, and on a node level task, and this is uh, something that I find very interesting because the example that he uses here in the Zach Carrick Club, which is a paper very interesting, like which is just more, like from 1977, uh, which uh, a guy studies like how formation flow, you know, uh, and, and, and how it, it uh, can yield fission in small groups and conflict and so on. So basically, the guy has spent like a few years. Uh, studying the Karate Club, uh, and during this time, he saw a, a, a conflict arising, and then the, the split of the Karate Club, and then between the, the instructor and the administrator, and then um, uh, the example here goes in, in trying to identify, predict the the allegiance of loyalty that the given uh, student would 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 have uh, either to one side or to other side. Uh, uh, very, very interesting example in, in the paper as well. Uh, very interesting story. Okay. And, oh, and, and here another example, like using the knowledge of test, text, uh, like predicting the parts of a speech would be something analogous to this, you know, like it is a known a verb or an adverb and so on. And, and the third one is the edge level task, you know, we want to predict the formation of edge or predict the attributions of those edge. Uh, uh, and, and, and this is especially interesting because the first thing that I got interested in, in taking a look at graphs and studying and working with graphs was uh, when, when uh, I had a meeting and then presented to me the, uh, uh, the, a project of graphs and I, I asked him what would be something uh, uh, like pretty future stuff to do with a graph. And then the person said to me that uh, the, the the future stuff to do with a graph would be to um, detect communities that have not yet been formed, you know, in the real world, they, they, they have not yet been formed yet, but uh, uh, but also detect communities that have been formed, but we don't have data uh, to, to infer that, uh, uh, like manually infer that. So uh, we would need to predict that those communities uh, have been formally and you and we just don't have data for that so this, this is a uh, uh, very interesting way of applying this and okay so 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 here he just uh, gave us an, an example like you first connected the whole graph and then apply the 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 the, the model to predict the the label of each of the relationships uh, between the, those parts, and then you cut off all the others that that didn't yield anything. So, just uh, uh, showing an example, of more practical stuff. Uh, okay, so uh, and now uh, we need to understand a little bit about the the challenge of using graphs in a machine learning right, environment. So. Um, the four types of information that we need that we can potentially use to make prediction are nodes, edge, global context, and the connectivity. You know, and uh, the first three is uh, it's like a more straightforward. You know, like you you, you have the nodes, you 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 build the matrix with the nodes uh, embeddings, and then you and also the edge and so on and global context, and and that's pretty straightforward. But the connectivity is is kind of a problem because. Uh, it's it's not easy to 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 use that kind of information during our our training of the model. Um, that yeah, and he says this is more complicated. Right. 
Uh, okay, so uh, something interesting to point here in that regard is that uh, a same uh, graph can use several types of the, uh, of adjacent matrix. You know, they, they are different adjacent matrix are here, but they are the same. And another point with uh, regarding connectivity is that you you need you de depending on the the structure of your data and you know, like the data engineering that you do you know, with your data. Um, in, in the size of the, your, your data set, you just can't use uh, like uh, adjacent matrix, uh, or you can use it, but you need to do for the treatment to reduce the the, the no spots, you know, because uh, adjacent matrix carries a whole formation. Like if you have like um, uh, one million uh, nodes, you have one million to square uh, uh, points to in, in, in your matrix, right? Uh, so he, here's a very interesting visualization of like all the different uh, uh, matrix that you can build, like adjacent matrix that you can build by uh, that will represent the same graph. You know? All of those here represent the same graph. Um, now, yeah, and he, he talks about the adjacent lists uh, as a very uh, elegant and more memory efficient. Uh, way of representing those sparse matrix, right? Because you, you instead of having all that information that you are not actually using, you you have it uh, in a in a in a more compact way, and you're just using and storing the things that you really need, the, the connections that you, uh, your graph is making. Uh, okay, so now talking about the the uh, GNN itself, uh, you. So um, something that you need to take into account is like uh, uh, during the layers, you need to, you know, you, you're going to, to apply a function to your data. Okay, so, uh, but what, what are you doing during those layers? You need to pass message because the graph uh, uh, leverage the connectivity of data, you know, like uh, you probably if you are using a graph is because your data is highly connected and you want to take advantage of that connectivity. Uh, so, how can you do that in a context of a neural network is by passing message, like aggregating those uh, messages in each layer, uh, uh, aggregating those embeddings from nodes and edges by the passage of each layer. You know, like uh, we'll have a more clear example. i uh, just uh, uh, talking here about like the the way we are going to, to feed is like uh, using this, the, uh, this, this GNN, we can feed the graph in the in the input and get an, an output as a graph as well, and and here the the thing that I'm okay. So this is the same. No, just a moment. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 right there. So um, okay, uh, we can. In this in this context here, like uh, in, imagine if you have uh, uh, several nodes that are connected uh, uh, together. Like th this guy over here, this guy over here carries information for all this, all the other guys here. So what we need here, what we would like to have here, is a way to pass information from all these nodes, you know, and and aggregate those, that information in this guy over here, and do the same for the other nodes and and ideally repeat that uh, on each layer, right? And this is exactly what he I uh, start doing here, introducing the idea of pulling uh, information for a graph neural network, which is something that we are doing with other models, other uh, uh, neural networks. But in this case here, uh, and the, the choice that you need to do, that the choice that you need to make is that either you will uh, aggregate information in from edge to nodes, which you can do. Can maybe imagine like you have you have this graph, but the information that uh, is contained in, in in the graph it's is uh, it's uh, uh, on the the edge and not on the nodes. You know, have the node the nodes uh, have the 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 nodes are just there to 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 be connected through the edges, but the information itself it's on the edge. You know, like a, a, as an attributes or properties of those edges, and then what uh, something that you could do is like pass the for aggregate those information that you have on the edges into those nodes in each 
uh, uh, layer. Here he's doing this in the final layer because he's using the, the, the boolean here uh, in this way. But uh, later on, he will introduce the, the idea of, of doing that for just a moment, for passing messages between parts of the graph in each layer, you know. So um, here can, we can see that he's doing that in each layer, passing information from all the nodes into and, and, and embedding and, 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 and carry that from the, the next layer. Something that, that happens here though is that uh, in, in the layer three, you will, like if you do this in each layer, in the layer three, you will have an information condensed in your nodes and aggregated in a node regarding three, uh, three nodes that are, at, that are uh, nodes that are three nodes apart, you know, two connections apart. Like uh, this, this is something that gets very powerful here because uh, uh, as I said, in the third layer, for instance, you will get uh, information that uh, there was uh, originally uh, only stored in two, three nodes uh, apart from that node. And again, the same you can do with uh, with edge. Uh, so, um, okay. So, uh, regarding the layer, uh, the the edge itself, you you can do that uh, in a in a in a different way. Uh, also, by uh, getting first, you 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 know you, you can get information uh, on the okay. You can get information from uh, pass from edge to nodes and then back to nodes from the edge. Uh, you would need to do like some linear mapping because the data is not in the same uh, uh, format, you know, like in the same size. The the, the, the vector, the data that's stored in this. These points are not the same size. You would need to to do some linear mapping here, but uh, the the main point here is just to show that uh, the the whole uh, uh, the the golden thing on on graph neural networks relies on how you are going to pass information uh, on each one of those layers. You know, like uh, uh, as I said, you are using graphs probably because you need uh, a more connectivity to your data points. And, and because your data is highly connected. So uh, this is the golden uh, spot for the graph neural networks, the, the, the ability to, to do this, the, this message pooling in each layer. And, and on, the, on the end, if you do like for, uh, for example, that I gave earlier on where you have the, the like, like a, Nodes getting messages, getting uh, uh, being aggregated of information of its neighbors in each layer, and then three layers later you have three uh, nodes apart information aggregating the same node. In the end, you will have like uh, it, it, if if you put layers enough, you have like nodes sustaining information, uh, aggregated information from the whole graph. You know, uh, maybe that's important for you. Maybe that isn't. It's uh, it, it it depends on the case. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, he he's, he's saying exactly that. Like uh, this. This depends on your use case. Uh, what types of attributes are you going to aggregate with each other during the passage of this, this and uh, these layers? It's uh, up to your experimentation, to your uh, your you know, your research purpose. Uh, and and oh yeah. So. Something uh, uh, important to note here, besides the node uh, pass information to ads and so on, is that uh, maybe uh, you you have nodes that are so far apart, like they they are one in one in in, in a corner and other in another corner, and they they just can't share information uh, uh, at all. And maybe you need the, those nodes share information. So for that uh, purpose, you would need to. To, to yield information from the whole graph in, a, in, in, in something they call master node. You know, you, you have a master node that's connected uh, to the whole graph, and then you use that master node, which is like, uh, he, he points here as the is UN. Uh, so, so you, instead of exchanging between uh, vertices and edge, like nodes and edge, you start exchanging from the this master node with the the eggs and the nodes and the, and in this way you can like uh, uh, yield uh, aggregations 
for uh, even those that are completely far apart, like uh, one in a corner and another in another corner, but you are uh, uh, getting uh, getting them together, like aggregate information information from those nodes together, because you are using those this uh, master node in your uh, aggregation, which by the way it's, uh, have uh, connectivity to the whole graph. Um, okay, so uh, here's something interesting. Here is like the the GNN play playground that they developed, which I mentioned that uh, is something that uh, they are using uh, TensorFlow JS, the, the library for uh, executing uh, models uh, in real time using JavaScript. Um, and here we are uh, going to use a, a molecule structure to try to predict the smell of a given molecule. And uh, here we have four types of things that we could uh, uh, a tweak to to change the performance of the model. You know, like uh, very briefly here, and then the number of GNN layers, the dimensionality of each attribute we we update them, uh, the aggregation function that we use. Like uh, here, we just uh, thinking about the max, min, and sum, and uh, and the graph attributes itself that will get updated. Okay. Um, so uh, I don't know if you guys took a look in the in the in, in the paper uh, and and test things out and in this uh, in this playground here, but it's very interesting what you guys did here and you can tweak like the layers that you're going to use and understand like oh by the way each each one of those uh, points here represents a, a a graph you know and which in the case it's a molecule and here you have the prediction of the model and the the. The, the label for that, right? Uh, and uh, okay, so uh, after experimenting with this uh, a little, we can uh, grasp uh, uh, a better intuition on how uh, those uh, configurations of our our model will uh, change the the way our model performs, right? Uh, and oh, also you can like take things out of here and change the properties of the nodes here just to understand better. And something that I, I realized here is that um, the, the uh, generally things the, kind of didn't change a lot regarding the, the pungent nodes, you know, like uh, you, you can, okay, so things. Yes, so uh, uh, regarding the pungent uh, uh, prediction, like uh, uh, pretty much uh, if, if you tweak things here, oh, and also you can completely remove some some sort of information like some embedding, like no edge embedding at all. Uh, but the, but, that, but but as I said, uh, the, the predictions on the, the pungent, uh, they, they kind of didn't change a, a, a lot, like the number of prediction there. The, Did you try the, adding extra layers? Oh yeah, like uh, changing the layers here. And this is interesting because uh, uh, like uh, for a new, newcomer like me, uh, the, the first thing that I, that I uh, f thought was, okay, so as much layers possible, right? Things will be better. But later on, uh, when we start uh, taking a look in, in, in the results, you know, like uh, exploring the results for these tests over here, we we can see that uh, like the, the best performance that, that we saw was on the uh, on, a, on 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 one model that was using two layers, and uh, so, but that there there are other differences as well like the number of attributes which was using uh, was the thing that was. Uh, 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 creating more difference in the the results of of the the model performance of the model. So, uh, okay, the the things here like the, the the choices that we 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 need to make when constructing those GNNs uh, is like uh, the the style of the message that we we are passing. As I said, this is. Uh, uh, for one of them, I have understood for this paper is the most important thing that we can do for for a, 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 
for, for our training is to decide and research and understand what will yield better results if we are going to aggregate information uh, uh, from nodes to ads and so on. Uh, what, what would be the style of this message passaging? The dimensionality of the embeddings and number of layers and uh, and the aggregation operation itself, you know, the sum, the, the, the mean, and so on, or the max. Um, okay, and, and here, each one of these points here represents a model, and we can uh, take a look here in the AOC, the error on the curve, uh, uh, which which is the, the the metric that we are using for understanding the performance of a model here. Uh, and the first thing that we can understand here is like the number of parameters uh, tend to, to, to improve the performance of the model. But uh, uh, there are, like here we are seeing the, 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 the plot for, for the performance, but, uh, and, and we are, uh, we are, no, like we we are not considering here like in our analysis like in the first moment all the other things that uh, they take into account when uh, analyzing this performance right like here we have all this this this, this configuration that as i said we we should take a look into and and this will change the way the model performs but uh and this graph is specific for the the number of parameters versus performance and and yes, as I said, like a, a more parameters correlate with a better performance, but uh, it's just on the average, you know, like a, a, the, the average here, it, 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 this is true for the average, you know, like for, for the mean, I guess, uh, I, I mean. And, but for, uh, uh, if you want to take a look at the maximum performance here, uh, it's not the, the, the highest uh, number of parents here. The, the model of the highest number of parents here didn't uh, yield good, uh, as good results as this one here, which is kind of the, the median, right, of the number of the parameters. No, I mean the median, because this is not uh, linear. So, uh, and here he, he explained exactly that, like uh, you, you, you can see that the higher dimensionality uh, tends to have better uh, mean and lower bulk performances, and also, that the, uh, the high dimensionality is uh, uh, going to involve a higher number of parameters, and that's why we we can expect to have better performance as in the high dimensionality uh, for cases where uh, uh, where we like uh, how can I uh, frame that like the. The number of parameters, the the the, the way the, the, the graph will uh, will distribute the, the performance here will be uh, somewhat like the, the number of the uh, dimensionality they bet is because they are correlated. Uh, and okay, so here uh, was the thing that was talking about the layers, like the two layers guy, two two layer guy here, the this model here was the best performance. Of, of all the models tests and the this guy's two layers you know and and it it isn't even like uh, uh, like the in the in the top of of the number of parameters so uh, also again this is not uh something that uh it's only a fault of the number of layers because as i said like this guy over here is also uh, being shown here, and you you could easily I uh, think that uh, having like somewhere between ten thousand parameters is the cause of this better performance. But then uh, and here we have another um, a way of seeing this. So uh, this is something that you should take into account all of those things. And this is exactly why uh, 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 they put a playground here for this genian because it's. Uh, it's the only way of creating like intuition for newcomers is to you know like uh, come here and, and test it uh, around and tweak things around and and see the results of these and then uh, read these and correlate the, the the results that we saw there with the, the explanations here so uh, okay but anyway moving on like uh, uh, yeah, like you, the best uh, performing models do not have three or four layers, but two. Uh, and I don't know, uh, unlike, um, okay, so I would expect 
to to have better performance as as as, as many layers I have. But here, uh, this is not happening, and so it doesn't. Uh, I'm not confident in thinking on how it would perform in like uh, 15 layers, for instance, or so on. Uh, other thing interesting to show here is the the the, the epoch, you know, like the 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 full cycle of a training. Uh, uh, it's it changes. Uh, uh, to uh, a certain point and then uh, it's it start getting like uh, more more let me change here more stable which is totally uh, uh, right uh, makes makes total sense right to start to 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 the change that you do while you you are training you know like you go for and then back propagate stuff and then the, the the adjustments you you do, you're supposed to reduce the the you no know, like a, a, as as much training you do, you suppo uh, supposedly you will start reducing the the the, the amount of of change you do in, in your in your weights and so on. So um, okay, um, just a moment here. Oh right, so this is important. Like here, here is the the message path passing uh, thing. Like uh, how how are you going to pass message? And here we can see uh, like we we need to understand that in this case we were uh, looking at uh, a graph level task. Remember, like we have node level task, edge level task, and graph level task. And, the, and here we are focused on a graph level task 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 because we we are trying to predict the smell of a molecule. And it, this is based on its attribute, you know, it's it's global, uh, 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 it's like, you know, it's global attribute. Like, okay, so this is going to have three rings and each ring will be separated by two connections apart and, and things like that. And this will, will yield uh, a smell more pungent or more acid, I don't know. So uh, for that case, you, 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 you expect to, uh, to have a, a, a more importance on aggregations that takes into account uh, uh, information uh, that comes from the whole graph. You know, like since you are trying to predict things that are uh, graph uh, level, uh, you you expect to to uh, have more importance on the the message passage that aggregates information from the whole graph. And Okay, uh, right. Uh, oh, yeah, like, uh, uh, so the, the, the hardest challenge, uh, uh, not the hardest challenge, but one of the, the, the biggest challenges is actually building the graph, right? Because uh, uh, building the graph itself is also something extremely difficult to do in a way that you can correlate the data that you can later use uh, uh, in a in a useful way uh, in a GNN, right? Because uh, it it all depends on how your graph is, is structured and how you you create it. So uh, and and here, like uh, just just like you know, for for our presentation, will be like just final thoughts here, uh, not final thoughts, final notes uh, that. Uh, we can we can extend that for other types of graphs you know like in this case we we are only taking a look in a graph where each node has one relationship uh, uh, shares one edge with uh, other nodes uh, with the same node right uh, but uh, you can have like uh, uh, several uh, edges being shared between the same nodes and this will uh, uh, be a consequence of how you structure your data and and, and how the, the the questions that you are trying to to answer will be framed during the data modeling, uh, and and uh, yeah, like nested graphs also. Uh, and, but but something very interesting here, it's like the hypergraph idea, where uh, like uh, you you kind of abstract a, a whole cluster. Uh, as something that uh, sustain uh, multiple relationships at once, and, and this this is something very interesting, very useful. But it would uh, actually uh, uh, 
uh, increase uh, the complexity of modeling a graph because you would, I guess, I suppose you would have to to think that in advance before uh, modeling the graph so you could take advantage of this idea. But you know, that is, yeah, it, that's that's interesting, very interesting. But okay, guys. So this this was the the, the thing that I was thinking on, on bringing here today to 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 like just to to light up these discussions on that regard and and perhaps to to have more more of that being talked uh, uh, in our in our routine. So thank you very much, everyone, for for the time you you took to to listen to me. And okay. Thank you, Danubio. Uh, comments.